In-depth football coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 per week. See the link in the description to sign up today. The 2020-21 UEFA Champions League is almost unrecognisable. It's taking place in a new era of social distancing, coronavirus protocols and empty stadiums. While some of the football in this new world has been scintillating, the silence in the stands has been deafening. But for a few moments back in September, in the Hungarian capital of Budapest, you could almost, almost forget the present and be transported back into a different world. The Hungarian champions, Ferenc Varos, known universally in Hungary as Fradi, were playing Norway's Molde in the second leg of the Champions League playoff. The stakes for the winner were huge. Access to the group stage, matches against the global elite, and of course a hefty payday. Now, it had been nearly a quarter of a century since they'd last graced this stage of the competition. A scandal for a club with such a long and rich European history. And Covid wasn't stopping Ferenc Varos's notoriously rambunctious support. Thousands turned up outside the new Ferenc Varos stadium dressed in green. Across the Danube and the Shandor Palace, the official residence of the country's president, Viktor Orban had put his faith in the team. Orban is a well-known football obsessive who sought to rebuild Hungarian prestige by investing in football, one of the country's enduring cultural traditions. I placed my bet on Fradi, he said, waving a betting slip in a video posted on Facebook. Go Fradi. Now, when the game finished nil-nil, securing their passage to the group stage for the first time since 1995-96, the crowd erupted in tears and song. Flares were lit and bass drums banged as the crowd chanted, Ria, Ria, Hungaria. And Ferenc Varos had been early football royalty. The club was formed in 1899 in Budapest's 9th district. As Jonathan Wilson writes in his book, The Names Heard Long Ago, Ferenc Varos carried a vague sense of German ethnicity. Their nickname, Fradi, is derived from Franstadt, the German form of Ferenc Varos. Initially, they were the dominant power in Budapest before being eclipsed by MTK, a mixed team set up by middle-class Christian and Jewish businessmen. But they were part of the rise of Hungarian football and a new passing game that, but for the outbreak of the Second World War, was set to dominate Europe. The war had a marked effect on Ferenc Varos. Due in part to their popularity, the club was taken over by the pro-Nazi puppet regime of the far-right Arrow Cross Party at the end of the war. At the same time, in 1945, the team's former player and coach, Istvan Tort, was executed for joining Hungary's anti-fascist regime, where, according to the World Jewish Council, he helped several hundred Jews escape Nazi custody and death. And in the post-war period, Hungarian football flourished once more. The story is, of course, well known. The magical Mayas. The golden team, 6-3 against England at Wembley. Ferenc the galloping major Pushkas, the miracle of Bern, and the 1954 World Cup final. Ferenc Varos fared less well. Seen by the communists as a hotbed of far-right reactionaries, the club's name was changed twice. That chapter closed with the failed 1956 Hungarian uprising, which saw players like Pushkas, Sándor Kocsic and Zoltán Zibor exiled at Europe's elite clubs, banned from representing Hungary again. But Ferenc Varos was given its name back in the same year, even if there were still some suspicions about the club's supposed anti-communist fan base. Yet behind the Iron Curtain, Ferenc Varos flourished winning the title four times in the 1960s. In Europe, they reached the final of the precursor to the Europa League, the Intercities Fairs Cup, twice. They beat Juventus in 1965 and lost to Leeds United in 1968. A decade later, they reached the final of the 1975 Cup Winners' Cup, beating Liverpool and Red Star Belgrade along the way before losing to Dinamo Kiev. Like most Eastern European clubs, though, Ferenc Varos struggled in the post-communist era playing their last season in the Champions League in 1995. Financially speaking, things went from bad to worse, and the club was eventually relegated in 2006 when, under crippling debts, they were unable to prove their ability to meet the following season's budget. That July, they'd been so poor that they'd been unable to afford a bus for a pre-season friendly and actually had to cancel the fixture. So, in 2008, in stepped Sheffield United owner Kevin McCabe, who won a tender to invest in the club and purchase its stadium and surrounding real estate. Coach Bobby Davison took Ferenc Varos back up to the top division, but was constantly battling with the club's fearsome ultras. In an interview with The Athletic, he recalled, 
There was one game when we won either 3-0 or 3-1 away after being down to 10 men from very early on, yet when we got back to our stadium, the bus was attacked. We'd beaten the same team 7-1 earlier that season, so it wasn't good enough that we'd only scored three times in the return. Davison quit after gaining promotion and was replaced by Craig Short, who had equally as tough a time. My first game as caretaker manager got abandoned because of a pitch invasion by our own fans. He later got a death threat in the post. Someone had cut out a picture of me from my Everton days and there was a sickle in the back of my head. In Hungarian, someone had written, Go home, Englishman, or die. McCabe left in 2011, disillusioned by his relationship with the club's minority shareholders and was eventually bought out by the Hungarian state. In fact, football in general became a matter of state. Under President Viktor Orban, nearly 100 million euros was invested in a vast stadium-building programme. Orban had been a tidy player himself, even turning out for his village team, Feldschut, during his first stint as Prime Minister in the later 90s. A brand new stadium would be built there, the Pancho Arena, whose capacity was twice the population of the village. As David Goldblatt and Daniel Nolan wrote in a Guardian profile of the president's football obsession, Orban has not been shy about steering funds to the area that's closest to his heart, football. The project, they argue, attempts to revive Hungarian footballing greatness as part of an ultra-nationalist reawakening of Hungarian identity or a campaign to make Hungarian football great again. And as Hungary's most popular team, Ferenc Varos also benefited. A brand new stadium was built on the site of the Uloi U. Gabor Kubatov, an MP for Hungary's ruling party Fidesz, was installed as club president. And after years of debt and mediocrity, money flowed in and results improved. In 2016, they won the league for the first time in 12 years. Under coach Serhi Rebrov, they've won back-to-back -back titles and finally a return to the Champions League. And they've even managed to tame their notorious ultras. Well, for now, at least. It would of course take a miracle for Ferenc Varas to qualify for the Champions League knockout stages, but that doesn't matter. The money they will make this time will be ploughed back into the team to ensure their domestic dominance continues. As with Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another populist leader who was once handy on the pitch, Viktor Orban has worked out that investing in football costs money, but it can bring political rewards. The new generation of the golden team is a long way off, but Fradi are back in the game. Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per week. Read in-depth coverage of your favourite teams across 10 different sports, provided by some of the best sports journalists in the world. Follow the stories that you care about with closer access and intelligent takes. Whether it's sports news, tactics or finances, you'll find it all on The Athletic, alongside a host of brilliant podcasts dedicated to different teams. So, see the link in the description now. Thanks for supporting TiVo and of course watching today's video.